Dear friends, welcome once again for the second part of the model millionaire written by the Oscar Wilde. In the earlier video, we have seen that Huey Erskine, the middle-aged uh, person who falls in love with Laura Burton, and uh, actually he was uh, poor. He tried his luck at every profession, but unfortunately he never succeeded in the other professions like uh, tea merchants. He also risked his money at the stock market also. Uh, from his aunt, he gained every year 2,000 pounds. But with that money, it was very difficult to live. And so that although he, he, he has a charming personality and uh, attractive personality, he has uh, admirers in the women's and as well as uh, in the men also. So, uh, uh, later on, one of his uh, uh, painter friend, that is artist Alan Trevor, uh, to whom he visited on various occasions. On one occasion, when he visited in uh, in the uh, in the in the frustration mood, uh, when he enters into the into the, into that uh, studio. At that point of time, Alan Trevor was, you know, painting, you know, he is uh, drawing a sketch of uh, a beggar and that beggar was uh, before him. That was the lively sketch of a beggar. Uh, by looking in the eyes of the beggar, uh, we Erskine becomes a very uh, sorry for the precarious condition for his, sorry for his uh, uh, for his condition and that's why he pity on him and uh, in order to uh, help him he gave a, he gave him a, a sovereign in the form of an affection to that uh, beggar so with that uh, uh, so we uh, uh, comes to an end with the first video let's begin with the second part of the video. When Trevor arrived and Hui took his leave, blushing a little at what he had done. Hui then uh, becomes a little bit, uh, becomes a shy and uh, Hui, Hui also uh, took his leave from that studio. He spent the day with Laura got a charming scolding for his extravagance and had to walk home. Later on in that day, uh, he, meet, he, meet, he met with the Laura, his uh, beloved, and uh, uh, he told what had happened in, at the studio of the Alan Trevor. On that, uh, Laura uh, scolded him, becomes angry with him. Uh, although he had no money and he is giving all this money, whatever he he had. That night, he strolled into the Palatine Club about 11 o'clock and found Trevor sitting by himself. In that Palatine Club, his uh, friend was there uh, and uh, he said, Well, Alan, did you get the picture finished all right? He said, Finished and framed, my boy, answered the Trevor. Question was asked whether you have finished the picture, whether you have drawn that picture. And to that, Alan replied that he had finished the uh, and finished it in a frame. And by the by, you have made a conquest. The old model you saw is quite devoted to you, said uh, Trevor, who we escaped. Actually, you made a lasting impression on the beggar, old model, that is, uh, that he posed before him for uh, the picture. I had to tell him all about you, who you are, where you live, what your income is, what prospects you have. So, all the information was told by the Alan. To that old man who was who was a model for the picture. Suddenly, 
he becomes so uh, angry you had told everything my dear alan cried he i shall probably find him waiting for me when i go home but of course you are only joking i think you might be joking poor old wretch i wish i could do something for him i think it is a dreadful that anyone should be so miserable i have got heap of old clothes at home do you think he would care for any one of them probably <sighs> he was thinking about helping that old fellow and he thought that there are various clothes at home by that so he could offer those old clothes to that old fellow who was a poor beggar who becomes a model for that picture to the allen's uh, uh, studio so he wanted to do something for that miserable fellow why his rags were falling to bits but he looks splendid in them said trevor they were said that in that uh, rag that is old clothes he was a splendid he was attractive he was you know more gorgeous one i would not paint him in a frock or coat for anything however i will tell him of your offer they were said that i will tell old fellow who was a model for the picture that you had a offer that he you you wanted to give old clothes uh for for him <sighs> and now tell me how laura is the old model was quite interested in in her you don't mean to say you talk to him about laura said he certainly i did he knows all about the relentless colonel the lovely laura and the 10000 pounds now uh, the conversation suddenly turned to a personal point alan told everything to that old model and he told him that he is in love with the law but his father her father colonel was not in agreement with their engagement he clearly told he that until and unless you have your own 10000 pounds then and then only he will think about their engagement you told that old beggar all my private affairs so he cried he looking very red and angry my dear boy said trevor smiling that old beggar as you call him is one of the richest men in europe he could buy all london tomorrow without overdrawing his account now see <clears throat> on that he replies that how dare to tell everything about the personal personal life to that old fellow and suddenly alan trevor becomes a sir gave gave him a surprise reply my dear boy that old beggar as you call him is one of the richest men in europe so he is the richest man in the europe he could buy everything from the london what on earth do you mean exclaimed he what i say said trevor the old man you saw today in the studio was a baron hasberg the person you met at the studio who was the model as a beggar was no other than a richest fellow in the europe and his name was a baron hasberg he is a great friend of mine buys all my pictures and give me a commission a month ago to paint him as a beggar already he paid the commission for that picture in that picture he himself posed as a beggar and he uh, buys all my paintings 
and I must say he made a magnificent figure in his rags, or perhaps I should say in my rags they are all an old suit I got in Spain. That was the reply by the traveler. Suddenly, the reaction of the tree was, you know, so you can imagine. Baron Herzberg cried, he, Good heavens, I give him a sovereign. And he sank into an armchair, the picture of a despair. And he becomes uh, uh, unhappy on his whatever he had done. Give him a sovereign, shouted Trevor, and he burst into a roar of laughter. My dear boy, you will never see it again. You see, as a token of love, as affection, as a pity on that old fellow, Free Air Skin gave him a sovereign. sovereign. And uh, when he realizes that he is no other than a richest fellow in the Europe, then suddenly he becomes angry with himself. I think you might have told me, yeah? said he sulkily. He becomes very, you know, uh, he felt very sorry on his behavior. You should have tell, tell me before that not and not have let me make such a fool of myself. I make my, myself a fool, he told to Trevor. Well, to begin with, he said it never entered my mind that you went about distributing arms in that reckless way. I never thought that you ha you you might have given him a, a sovereign as arms or as a... Uh, besides, the fact is that I really was not at home today at, to anyone and when you come in, I did not know whether husband would like this mention. You know, he was not in full dress. What a duffer he must think me, said he. So, he told Alan that uh, that husband might have think that he the stupid fellow who had given him a sovereign. Not at all. He was in the highest spirit after you left. Alan told him that when you left the studio, Husband was in a in a higher spirit, kept chuckling to himself and rubbing his. Uh... So, he smiles to himself and rubbing his old wrinkled hand together. I could I could not make out why he was so interested to know about all about you. Now I can guess why he was so interested uh, in your life. But I see it all now. Now I could guess why he was so interested in you. He will never invest you. He will invest your sovereign for you. He pay you the interest every six months and have a capital story to tell after dinner. And an unlucky devil growled Huey. On that Huey Erskine becomes uh, uh, he, he becomes uh, unhappy with his behavior and uh, uh, he said that the best thing I can do is to go to bed and my dear Alan, you must not tell anyone. So you should not report all these things to the other, other uh, friends. He walked home feeling very unhappy and leaving Alan Trevor in fits of laughter. So Alan Trevor was laughing on his behavior. And uh, uh, Hui left uh, for home the next morning as he was at breakfast. The servant brought him up a card on which was written, Messner Gustav Nadin, messenger from Baron Hasbar. So in the, um, uh, the next day, early in the morning, a messenger came from the Baron Hasbar. He reported that so uh, a messenger a servant reported that a messenger from the Baron Hasberg has uh, entered into their house. I suppose he has come for an apology, said Hui to himself. Hui thought that uh, that servant, the messenger from the Baron, wanted an apology. 
from him. That's why he thought that in that way. And he told the servant to show the visitor up. So he told the servant that so let him come in the house. An old gentleman with the old gold spectacles and gray, gray hair came into the room and said, Have I, have I honor of ad addressing Monsieur, Monsieur Eskin? We bowed. I have come from Baron Husband. He continued, Baron, I beg, sir, that you will offer him my sincere apologies. Stammered he. he suddenly, tendered his apology. He, he was sorry for his behavior by offering a sovereign. He told that messenger. The Baron said the old gentleman with a smile has commissioned the Baron has commissioned me to bring you this letter. The Baron has a, wrote a letter to you and he extended a sealed envelope and that messenger handed a envelope sealed envelope to Erskine. Ah! On the outside was written, on that envelope, there was a message, a wedding present to P. Erskine and Laura Merton from an old beggar and inside was a check for 10,000 pounds. So that was the wedding gift given by the baron and on that uh, envelope the message was a clear one he wanted to give a present and the present is a check of 10000 pounds and the same amount which was demanded by the colonel the father to the laura murder on that condition only, Colonel was angry for their engagement. And the nature of Huey Erskine, his affectionate nature to the beggar, although he don't know who he was, but in that condition also, he gave his, his own possessions sovereign as a token of love. Is a way of pity, he's a generous nature. When they were married, Alan Trevor was the best man, and the Baron made a speech at the wedding breakfast. When the wedding was arranged accordingly, the best man was Alan Trevor. The best man is the person who carried the bride and groom and, uh, and the speech was given by that richest fellow in the Europe and that speech was given by the no other than the husband. Million, millionaire models remarked Alan on that speech. Alan said to himself, millionaire models are rare enough, but model millionaire are rare, rarer still. That the millionaire who becomes a model, but he also becomes in actual life a model. He becomes an example to follow. And in that way, he helps Huey Erskine and also Laura. And both the, these couples become uh, they, they were tied in the knot by the marriage. So with this, the story comes to an end. So I hope you can you you might have understand the story. So thank you.